So what we have in front of us here are a bunch of variously flavored vape pens. Those will all get you stoned, right? But this right here is a very special pen formulated for you, Dookie, because this will absolutely not get you stoned at all, right? I don't, I don't really smoke. And this was a terpene that you really liked when you saw the pantry, it's Wi-Fi OG. Oh yeah, I remember this one. Yeah. All right, so press the button. Mm-hmm. Chocolate cake. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> okay, I get the smoke element of it too. Yeah, that's yeah. good. That's good. We leave that right there. That's good. The first and last time Dookie first hits a vape pen. Seoul is one of my favorite food cities in the world. So naturally, I want to throw a cannabis-infused Korean dinner with all the spicy stews and fermented flavors. To help me pull this off, I'm enlisting Dookie Hong, a gifted young chef from New York who actually has zero experience with cannabis. So we're going to give him a crash course in our favorite ingredient. Dookie, I'm super excited for you to be joining us on this culinary cannabis experiment. And as I understand it, you've never cooked with cannabis before. Is that right? I've never even seen it being infused with Korean food, let alone Asian food. I'm not really well versed in it, and I think that's why I was kind of really intrigued, because I wanted to learn more about it. This is the team that I need. I definitely need you. <laughs> I definitely need you, because I don't smoke. I don't really do any of that stuff. So you've stuff. never smoked weed ever? Uh, I have one time. Well, in, how was that? In Denver, where it was legal. Oh, yeah. yeah. We ended up eating ramen noodles with three of my friends in the parking lot of some Cheetos as our kimchi. But you managed to put together a stone dinner in the parking lot of Yeah, it's a, it was oh, very gourmet. Time, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's like, we gotta eat something. What are you thinking about for the menu? I think one of the main dishes that I wanna do is spicy army stew. Uh, it's called pudetjige in Korea. If Korea had to have a stoner dish, this would be it. There's spam sausages, and then there's old fermented kimchi, onions, ramen noodles, American cheese, all these ingredients that aren't necessarily should be together in one pot, is in one pot, and it's actually really delicious. Korea and America have this like cultural, it goes back when kind of the GIs were there and they've had their stuff, so they had spam and all of these like hand uh, products. Yeah. So that came into a very traditional Korean dish, like a kimchi stew, and then it made its own dish. So the pude or the spicy rum stew, has its like cultural significance in Korea too. Yeah, um, and it's one of my favorite Korean dishes. Oh, I yeah. absolutely love the yeah. hot pots. But what are you guys thinking for the preparation, the infusion? You can melt something like distillate into it, but we've been trying to kind of use use flour as much as possible, just okay. because that's what most people at home have. Yeah. With this, I'm assuming people want to eat a lot of it because yeah. it's, you know, like a big pot of stew. So yeah. maybe we don't activate it. We'll use it as an herb, and you can mm. smell different things or terpenes and really get um, I'm excited when we put our noses yeah. in the jar. And let's put let's put CBD in that yeah. too, because okay. it's like a you know mellowing sort of thing, sure. not psychoactive. So yeah. I trust you guys. I'll bring the Korean, you guys bring the cannabis. <laughs> <element to it. laughs> Hopefully the marriage works. Think it will. <clears throat> yeah, I think so. And then just thinking some fried element. Koreans are really avid chicken lovers, um, so something with chicken. Keef is like a powder. Yeah, you know, yeah. it can be like powdery, so that might be cool to kind of like toss in the That's fried chicken, and mix. it'll. Yeah. Activate slightly from the, the fat and the fried chicken and the heat from the chicken. So that might be really that. cool. Yeah, let's yeah. try it. I know you love a lot of that fermented element, like fermented paste, uh, definitely some kimchi and some quick pickles also. So we'll play around and we'll have some acidic and fermented elements too to just fill up the whole table. And so I'm very like free with it. We'll go into the market and we'll just see what, what they got. We've got the main parts of the meal down yeah. and the rest of it we'll do a Korean style. We'll improvise, we'll let the ingredients oh. guide us, right? Yeah. yeah, man. I love it. Awesome. We're at Zion Market, I think probably the best Korean grocery store in Koreatown. All right, well, let's get a cart and get started. Let's do it. Um, what is right. this? That's a big stick. Wait a minute. Soybean paste, red chili paste. Hot pepper paste. This is Korean food, essentially. It's, it's just like the taste. Yeah. What is that? What are those fit? Like, what are. It's like abalone, right? Mmm. I've just never seen them like. Like alive. Yeah, they've always been dead or in my mouth. <laughs> so, this is kind of like the most iconic um, 
Korean herb, if you want to call it. Right. So what this is perilla leaves. Nighty. Let's get some of those, because yeah. those will remind me of uh, the cannabis. Three. Great. OK. This is oh, not, this not, our, it's not our cart. You've got, this is not your cart. <laughs> don't, don't steal other people's <laughs> cart. <laughs> some grandma's like, what the hell are you doing with my cart, boy? <laughs> We talk about fermentation, right? So these are a lot of like pickle uh, fermented. All right, right here. Oh. I think this is you get the beer. Yeah. This is the you know the perilla leaf that we just bought yeah. fresh. This is the pickle version of that. Yeah. Ooh. Right. Really caramelly. All right, tasting's over. Back to my red bean. All right. I'm just gonna come here to get all the snacks. Hockey sticks. You stop right now. <laughs> That's what we're getting. What's this? That's baby octo. Korean deep bell, raw, like live. All right, we're good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is so much. This can just go right here. Oh, hello. I promise you we'll eat it all. I'm not worried. Don't be worried, girl. Doogie, I'm so psyched to have you at the house, man. This here is going to be providing you with some colors to paint with. This is our cannabis pantry. Oh, God. That is a lot <laughs> of yeah. weed. We're using a lot of like kimchi, like fermented kimchi. So we got funk, we got a lot of spice. What would complement that pretty well? One of the cool things that we have here is like this keef, um, which, you know, is, you know, kind of like a dry powder. Yeah, so, um, and what all that is is, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's a too, uh, went too that, far in. <laughs> that's a strawberry lemonade. So that's like a, a kind of darker spice here. That's yeah. a cookies. Think like thyme. Thyme has all. They're all different sorts of thyme sure. or mint. So that's the variety. And when it's dried out, it has a different flavor profile. This is a nice OG Kush oh, flower. Wow. Ooh, I like that one. Yeah, it's it's California a li little baby. bit lemony. So yeah, we we can figure it out. Uh, we'll just kind of go dish by dish. Sure. And come up with some good stuff. Awesome. So I'm going to try a little piece of that kimchi. It looks really good. So just to recap real quick, um, what exactly is going to be on the menu? Spicy armor stew that we talked about. That's going to be fun, middle of the table, kind of family style. And along with that, we're going to do some fried chicken. Um, we have some pickles that we're going to do, some like uh, roasted mushroom pickle, some watermelon pickle Asian pears. It's a Korean meal, and it's a lot of strong, strong flavors, like in yeah. every corner. It's got crazy extreme flavors of Korean cuisine. Yeah. There's fried chicken, there's Spam, and there's American cheese. There's also these kind of traditional stoner things. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like stereotypical stoner snacks. Doogie, I couldn't be more excited, man. So we're going to do some dry rub or toss, like a dry seasoning for the chicken wings when it comes out. But we're going to add some. What are we going to add to it? Keef. Oh, the keef. keef. Yeah. I really like all this keef, too. That pineapple one is the best, hands down. I like the pineapple one, too. OK. So we have the black peppercorns uh, that we just uh, kind of uh, ground up, mortar and pestle, uh, shrimp powder. So this is for like umami. That Korean uh, chili pepper powder for a little bit of spice. Right. how much keef do you think would go in here? I don't think it's going to be activated really that much. I, I would just do, you know, like a good pinch like you would a normal spice, I guess. All right, we're going to add a little bit of this pineapple keef. Yeah. Keef has an interesting history, right? It's one of the oldest extraction methods. It's just agitation and screens. People recently have really been kind of elevating it to a new level. Before, it used to have a lot of plant matter, and it was kind of a less clean product. But now people are getting it to the point where it's like 99% of just the gland heads, which is like what you want in a concentrate. This is the coconut sugar with yeah. the THC, and I think we should toss the chicken in that too, just awesome. because it's gonna be fun. So you get this nice, like, almost orange kind of hue. From here, we put equal parts salt. The wings, right, when it comes out of the oil, instead of hitting with just regular salt, we're gonna hit it with this. I think it's the first time there have right. ever been fried chicken wings tossed mm. in keef. Is that good? We could have more of that weed flavor. How do we impart more of that? We could just, like, grate it in. Let's do that. Okay, let's try the OG. I think it's good to put some California in there. That looks beautiful. Yeah, that is the guy. This is your weapon. And what is going to be breaded in there? This is going to be for the fried chicken. A little baking powder, cornstarch, and some flour. Add some cold water to it. Um, it should feel like watered-down Elmer's glue. Oh. Uh, that's... That is uh, soju or vodka. Some sort of alcohol. Where's my shot? It's just a light, light coating. Okay. Nothing crazy. Mm -hmm. I stopped making a mess, dudes. 
So you see a little bit of that skin cute, yeah. Okay. From here. Into the fryer. Hold it off a little bit. I think we can fry like four at a time. When do you want me to pull them? Uh, it's gonna take like eight to ten minutes to pop. You got it. So right when they come out, you hit it with it. One second, one second, one second. Can you tell me how much? One second, one second. Uh, hit me, hit me. No, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> we gotta work in sync. There you go. Yeah, yeah, go for it. I like a lot of spice. Mm -hmm. Go for it. Come on, come on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's do it. That's good. Come on. Oh, man, you really smell that weed. Fried chicken and sauce. Oh, my God. Awesome. Nailed it. These are the fresh cannabis leaves. Fresh leaves. Oh, what? So I figured we'd fry them. Yeah. We'll do the same uh, preparation as the chicken. Mm -hmm. A little bit of cornstarch. A little bit of batter. Nothing crazy. Oh, wow, that looks fun. Deep fried pot leaves. That's a crazy thing. Let's do a little tester. OK, I'll come in on the deck. This smells so good. It's like pretty, like, solid. Oh, yeah. We got to get you stoned, Dookie. Then you'll finally see all these, like, new dimensions to everything <laughs> in front of us. You have, you have like, the most inspiration when you're stoned, apparently. Yeah. <laughs>to go along with the cannabis infused korean meal that dookie's going to be preparing we wanted to get a beverage that would fit in with everything so we're here with austin sherman from gem botanicals and he makes a cannabis infused kombucha and i want to know what it's all about what is kombucha exactly austin so kombucha is a fermented bacterial culture and this bacteria is a probiotic and people drink it and they say it makes their stomach feel better and improves digestion so what's the first step to making kombucha what we're going to do is two steps we're going to make a kombucha and then we're going to make a lemonade and then we're going to infuse them together what i'm about to do is pour the agave nectar into the pot with the cannabis to simmer which will infuse the agave with the cannabis. We, we decarbed about seven grams of flour for that, so it'll be roughly a 1,000 milligrams. You just have to toast the weed a little bit before you infuse it into your agave, whatever you want. Exactly. Yeah. If you just took fresh buds and did that, you would just have THCA in here. And it wouldn't cannabis. actually get you higher. After it simmers for about 15 or 20 minutes, you're going to get most of the active cannabinoids out of it. So for the lemonade, we need about four cups of berries. Shave the lemon. We're just going to puree it. Cool, so that's all done. So now we just need to strain the canvas. Cool. So it looks like you got just about as much as you need, huh? We're about 200 milliliters, just, okay, cool. just about six ounces. So this goes into the blender. Right in. And we'll just use the blender to mix it up real quick. <laughs> done. Damn. <laughs> Boil some water and add some sugar to it, which is going to be the food for the bacteria. OK, so this is basically what's going to spark that fermentation. fermentation. Now we need to put the tea in it. We put eight tea bags into one gallon of water. And we used green tea, black tea. We really just used a selection that we, we picked on our own. So once this tea cools down, we will add kombucha culture to the tea. We have our kombucha cultures here. It's a living thing, huh? Exactly. You can order it off the internet. So now that this is cooled down, we just need to pour it in and let it sit in a nice dark place, uncovered with some cheesecloth over it. After the kombucha ferments for five to seven days, then we would add the second layer of fruit to it. So we've got our lemonade that we made earlier. We're just going to go ahead and strain it out a little bit. So it kind of leaves, gives it a little bit of flavor. So right now we're just getting out the big, big chunks. All the seeds from the berries and stuff, yeah put a lid on it lightly and let it ferment for another week. And it's also ready to drink right now. Good stuff. Cheers to you guys. Cheers. Awesome. Thanks so much for showing us. No problem. Oh, yeah. Wow, that's really good. I'm going to make a quick marinade for the stew to just flavor the stock. Some garlic, a lot of garlic, a Korean chili pepper powder. Yeah. I think we should have gotten like eight bottles of that stuff. <laughs> some marin and some soy sauce, so. That is done. Stew, we're gonna put a lot of American influences on it. I'm gonna start with some bacon. I'm just gonna let this render out. Our stocks aren't like anything crazy. So we got some dried uh, anchovies, some kelp. We got some shrimp. That's your umami. That's my umami. So this stuff. Is that. This is this. But you put it in a bag. Yeah, from here. Whew. 
I add a little kimchi. I just want that kimchi to coat all that bacon fat. And it picked up all of the, yeah. the rendered exactly. pieces on the bottom. Fond. The fond. Fond. <laughs> That's right. So this is the dashi that we did. Gotcha. So it's just like a super yeah. seafoody broth. So from here, we can add kind of some of these vegetables, daikon, some onions. And this is just going to kind of sit in there, release all of the flavor. Yeah. It's a great base to start adding the seasoning and the flavor. And, um, but definitely taste the sea. Ah, oh, yeah. There it is. It's fishy and seaweedy, right. and it, it literally it's tastes like... It's a good basis like... for the flavor, right? Yes. Beautiful broth. Uh, we're going to add the marinade to the stew. I'll add some of this awesomeness. Sausage. I'll add half. I'll have the other half on the table. Damn! Yeah. Red and bright. How do you even fit all of that in there? And I'm going to finish that off with some ramen and some American cheese at the table. So for the stew, I was thinking we would add some CBD distillate. Yeah. It doesn't have any psychoactivity. Mm -hmm. It does counteract THC, so it balances your high, which okay. I think for the stew works perfectly. Do you want right. to taste it? Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't really have any flavor. Let okay. me garnish it, and then you guys, you can put it on top of the ramen or something, so it's like a white powder. Okay. I think that'd be kind of cool. So there's some rice cakes, there's some ramen. Yeah, some scallions, cheese. So fancy. It's so fancy. Pretty white. Is that a lot? No. no that's good. There is no a lot. There's no a lot. So, bum bum bum. Yeah. So this is the first infused Asian meal that we've had. I grew up in Southeast Asia, and a lot of this food, a lot of these flavors are really close to my heart. Tonight, my dinner guests are Eddie, who manages K-pop artists, Victoire, a Parisian food critic, Crystal, who recruits chefs here in LA, April, a fashion designer, and Uki's close friend, Daniel. Today was a really weird experience. I didn't know anything going in. My crash course on my like, cannabis cooking was just yesterday with the help of Vanessa and Ryan and you. This is what came about. Right on the stove top, it's like a boiling army stew. It's called pudichige in Korean, spicy army stew. Um, a lot of American influences because it's, it's like a GI influenced dish. You got traditional Korean ingredients like old kimchi, green onions, and like a dashi stock, but then you have Spam, sausage, American cheese. Yeah, so it's a very American Korean dish. This dish we wanted to do a CBD stew so people could kind of like sit down and get happy with it because it's going to mellow you out and balance the THC in the other dishes. White stuff is just little CBD, which is uh, not like a psychoactive. It's non psychoactive. All right, you learned something. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I looked it up before I came here. <laughs> CBD. Um, a lot of this food is pretty. Um, I don't want to say heavy, but it's, it's pretty rich. So the side dishes, I want a lot of acid and some kick and vinegar. Um, this right here is a persimmon quick kimchi, uh, along with a watermelon quick kimchi. So super refreshing, but you get that spice and funk for the kimchi. This right here is a roasted mushroom pickle. So you get that bitterness and that umami from the mushrooms, but it's pickled. Thank you. So good. Persimmon? For the persimmon and the watermelon kimchi, we put some coconut THC sugar. It's very mild, but if you want to kind of snack on those, you will get high. Next, we have a kimchi fried rice. We got bacon, caramelized onions, roasted kimchi, and a compound butter that we infused cannabis. Live or, resin. Live resin, yeah. I'm not going to get it in one day. Um, yeah, so <laughs> live resin in that. And we also added some of that coconut THC sugar in the when we were roasting the kimchi our centerpiece fried chicken. I love fried chicken and I love doing our version of it. Vanessa had the idea to do like a dry rub instead of like a traditional soy garlic uh, Korean fried chicken. The rub is Korean influences. You got brown garlic, dried shrimp, Korean chili pepper powder, but we also added layers and layers like of cannabis. Like three levels. Yeah. So there's the coconut THC sugar. There's the keef, pineapple keef. And then the last thing that we did was to grate OG Kush flour, which I have. And if you want to add some more, I'm happy to grate more. Like Parmesan food. cheese. <laughs> but everything's been really mild. We'll be the judge of that. Oh. I know, yeah. Vanessa had a great idea to um, 
fry up the cannabis leaves. We came up with something that I think we're very proud of, and it's really delicious. Is there any additional infusion in the leaves besides just the leaves themselves? It's triple infused, so it had the keef, it had the uh, the grated OG Kush, and then it had the coconut THC sugar. That's the way we should do it. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> and is it, so it's, I think that's our, that's our top. That's the record. So this is our most infused single item on Bong Appetit. <laughs> it tastes it good. Oh my God, I ate so many in the yeah. kitchen. <laughs> we were definitely snacking in the kitchen. I feel it. It feels good. Enjoy the food, guys. Thank you so much. And uh, Bong Appetit. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Doogie. <laughs> that's like the best fried chicken I've ever had, I'm pretty sure. Just like the ratio of skin to meat is just like perfect. Love it. So there's actually like American cheese mounted into this. Did you guys taste it? Like instead of like I butter, couldn't taste it at all. Actually. It was like oh American cheese yeah. singles. No, it's like melted into the sauce. Yeah. It's softer as well. I think this really is like the closest. Yeah. Stoner food. That that Korean cuisine can offer. So great. Oh man, these mushrooms are ridiculous. I definitely taste it in the watermelon. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You almost like forget and we're just having like a lovely time and you guys are also lovely and the food is so good. It's all And then every, every, every 10 minutes when I shut the up, it's like, oh, you're stoned, shut up. <laughs> all right. All righty. Here we go, this is dessert. These are like my childhood snacks, so I just wanted to share that with you guys. In addition to Dookie's favorite childhood desserts, and these really, really tasty vape pens. We've also got some infused kombucha to finish this off and top off a completely Korean experience. Dookie, you represent a type of person who's going to use cannabis as an ingredient and really push it to the next level, despite the fact that you personally are not into the psychoactive effects of this thing, yet you recognize its versatility Absolutely, as yeah. an ingredient. You know what I mean? And that I really commend you for, I think in many ways, this has been the best Bong Appetit dinner we've had. Oh. I feel like, I feel like I, I know you're gonna shut me up with this, right? <laughs> but it is really special, Dookie, and I just wanna say thank you so much oh, thank you. for your talent, for your creativity, and for lending it to us. And thank each and every one of you for coming through and sharing in this amazing experience with us. Thank you so much. Cheers, guys. Bong Appetit! I'm stoned. <laughs>